Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin Leppard with Higher Hertz, and today I want to talk about something really important. On this channel, I talk a lot about how to play cello, and it's essentially also an advocation to be learning cello on your own. Now, the reason why I do believe in this, like being worth it at all, is because I've learned a lot of things from YouTube, and because basically the most important part of cello um, in addition to the feedback loop you're going to get from playing with other musicians and from teachers and all of that stuff is going to be whether you're practicing. If you're practicing, you're going to find yourself having certain issues. And I believe that, you know, this, these videos address a lot of those issues, basically like, oh, oh, that's how, you know, you can do it. The answers are there, but you have to put in that work. So the biggest mistake that people make when they actually start to learn with a teacher, you know, and they can't just jump around to different video topics, you know, as they're working on this, is that the teacher isn't going to want to progress at all until you've been able to do the thing that they've mentioned, which basically means that the thing that happens and literally every single person who's ever taught like will have had this experience. I promise you, you are teaching something and you end up teaching it for like two months and it was supposed to be something they could have learned in a week. Um, and then everyone's frustrated and nobody gets anywhere, and maybe you keep moving along, like maybe you keep learning the next Suzuki song, even if you you know, you know didn't actually learn the last one, but then that just means that you're not very good, or that you, you think you're better than you are because you're like further along in the method book or whatever. So that's really frustrating, right? Because it's not like people, you know, want to do that. And if you're younger, you know, it's not your money you're, you're essentially wasting, but it is it is frustrating nonetheless. And if it is your money, it's frustrating. And also for the teachers, it's frustrating. But I'm not really here to like make an advocacy case for teachers as much as I am to make an advocacy case for learners. If you're going to take lessons with somebody, be prepared to be serious about being able to schedule. Now, the reason why I know this is hard is because when we want to set a schedule, you know, life gets in the way and, you know, we basically are just doing our best to kind of hang on to, you know, what we're doing anyway. So I do understand that. So in this video, I want to give you guys a few different ways that you can deal with this problem so that, you know, you're not just basically spending money at a gym, but you never work out. That's kind of a, the metaphor here, how you can actually make sure that you're going to practice and how you can build up to practicing enough. Okay, so there are a few ways that you can do this. You can use a notepad, you can make a spreadsheet if you wanna get fancier. You can use notebook paper if you're old school and you're, you're really gonna see it. But all you have to do is at night, the, the night before or the, the day of when you're gonna practice, you just need to make a little plan for yourself. And all it needs to look like is this. All right, you're gonna go practice, boom. All right, now the first thing that you wanna do always is whatever you know you can do. For me, sometimes, you know, I'm not feeling it with the bow yet, and I just start by plucking some stuff because that's just a little bit easier to get moving. I like finding, you know, some grooves that way, and then I can add the bow in. All right, so whatever it is, you know, for me, it would be free playing. You know, we're going to start simple. So I want to start making a schedule based off of assuming that you do know how to get your instrument out for like five minutes, you know, a couple of days that week and you know run through the rep a couple of times right that's that's where a lot of people can be but that's not really enough to progress so we're going to put that in here though so we're going to do uh play through rep that's going to be five minutes all right once we've done that all we need to do is we need to just push ourselves a little bit more and we're going to do one additional thing. We're going to do what I always emphasize and is kind of hard to do, which is scales. We're going to do that for five minutes. All right. That's day one. You just, you do that. And then, you know, you can also keep track of what you did do. Like that would be a very organized way to sort of keep track of progress, but you don't have to worry about it too much. You know, just worry about uh, day two. All right. We're coming back day two. Let's assume we were able to do this. All right, so let's let's allow ourselves a, a little bit more time. We'll say six minutes. All right, now when we're playing through rep, this is going to be a little easier today. I mean, it might feel harder in the sense that oh, now we're now we're aware of warm where we could improve with the rep, but it's going to be just easier because we're coming back to it the second day in a row. 
Uh, so we'll also we'll split seven minutes, all right? And we can give ourselves some slack on scales, all right? Now, what you want to start doing though, in you know not too much time, is building up how long that is, building up to 30 minutes or 40 minutes. That's a pretty big milestone. For me, I feel like sometimes you need 30 or 40 minutes to even be fully warmed up with your instrument. So think about that. If you're uh, only ever practicing up to 30 or 40 minutes, then at best you're getting warmed up, right? But you're not actually getting a lot of time playing while warmed up and more fluid with the instrument. So it is important to break some of these barriers. And I think if you're getting up to 90 minutes or two hours of practicing on your own, then you're definitely going to get a lot out of working with a teacher. And with the advent of you know, computer technology, we've been able to even expand further what we can do. So here's one thing that I've been doing recently. I just took the time to make PDF pages of different things that I'd like to work on. This way I can kind of skip around and it's just all right here in one folder. Whatever you do and whether you end up starting to study with a teacher or not, it's just what you need to do to practice if you want to get good at the cello. Practicing, forming that muscle memory association with the instrument, it'll allow you to actually think about what you're trying to do in between practicing and get better at that. And it's also how you're going to get things out of these videos fully, you know. Uh, but one of the things I do love about YouTube is the fact that you can like watch all these videos that we've made here and start getting that full sense of what you would need to do when you start. I think that's actually really helpful. Like I would have liked that. It's a lot harder when you're, uh, you know, you're stuck at a level, but you don't even know like what it looks like to be unstuck. You just, you just know that it feels uncomfortable. So that's a bit annoying. So that's the value of YouTube, but please, please, please. And the point of this video is don't go to a teacher and pay money. If you are not practicing, that is a, uh, that is for when you actually know you're going to practice. And then you're going to get a lot out of a teacher because they're going to be catching things that you wouldn't know how to catch. Their experience will help guide the repertoire you're going to learn. And the feedback loop is going to help you actually grow as a musician. But that starts from having something in the first place to play off of, having some sort of skill level in the first place that you are being tutored on. All right, so I hope that this doesn't come across as just some angry old man's rant about how important it is to practice. This truly is, I believe, the single biggest mistake people make when starting off cello. And if you can just avoid this and find a way to organize and grow like your muscles, how to build a practice program, you're gonna do much, 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 much better. You're gonna be happier and the teacher's gonna be happier and you are actually gonna grow and start playing music really well. And even if you're just learning from YouTube, well, that's also how you're going to do it. You're going to be organized with your practice and you're going to get a little bit better, a little bit over time. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. Really hope you guys appreciate it. Let us know how things are going in the comments and we'll be glad to read it and try to help you out. We'll see you guys in the next video. My name is Justin Leopard with Higher Hertz. Till next time.